Eric Mwave from Mwave.com with U.S. market analysis for the weekend of January 6th and January 7th, 2018. I trust everybody's having a great beginning to the year 2018. Wish everybody a happy new year. All right, let's get to it here. And we are looking at the markets with about 50 minutes to go before the close of the first trading week for the year 2018. Markets trading at all-time highs in terms of the Dow, NASDAQ, and the S&P 500. Now, to keep this video relevant and to the point, I just want to show you something we've been talking about for many, many months, and it is a very simple concept. And to understand this, you just have to understand what it means for an instrument when the RSI is trading above 69.1. This is the key. Because if you understand this, then what the market is doing right now makes a lot of sense and is consistent with what we understand when the RSI is above 69.1. Now, put it simply is stocks don't pull back when the RSI is above 69.1. They only pull back when the RSI moves back below 69.1. Here's a good example right here. All right. So right now, if we take a look at the S&P 500, the reason why we are seeing this acceleration, guess what? Is because on the daily, the RSI has gone back above 69.1. That is technical explanation why the market continues higher it would make no sense otherwise but this should actually pick up the pace as long as the rsi is above 69.1 now this is the daily consider that on the hourly for the s p 500 guess what s p 500 hourly also above 69.1 which is why we are seeing this market absolutely refuses to go down you take a look at the S&P 500 weekly chart. It's been above 69.1 since about late September on the weekly, which is explaining why we are picking up momentum might actually go into a hyperbolic finish. As long as the RSI is above 69.1. This is the S&P 500 weekly. Take a look at the S&P 500 from a monthly view. And the monthly for the S&P 500 has been holding above 69.1 pretty much since the beginning of 2017. And we've been stating that in this period here, expect there to be sideways to bullish market with a possibility of a hyperbolic finish to this move. That's exactly what is happening here. It is consistent with what happens when a market stays above 69.1 for a long period you tend to have this type of hockey stick hyperbolic move that's the s p 500 now take a look at for example the dow the dow has been above 69.1 going back to this period here which was november of 2015. so for more than a year it's been picking up pace why because the rsi is above 69.1 it's as simple as that. Take a look at the weekly for the Dow since about September when the RSI went above 69.1. This coincided with a price breakout. And since then, we've just picked up momentum. This is a characteristic of the RSI holding above 69.1. Right here, we can see a good example of this. We move above 69.1 here. You continue trending higher until you move back below 69.1. Same thing here. You move above 69.1. Yes, you get pullbacks, but they are very shallow and short-lived until the market moves back below 69.1. So right now, as long as the Dow is moving above 69.1 on the weekly time frame, expect this to pick up momentum. You take a look at the Dow daily. And the Dow daily 
has been above 69.1 pretty much from late November when it broke out in price has not looked back so this is just a technical behavior of a market that is bullish and as long as it is holding above 69.1 expect there to be tiny pullbacks ultimately the market remains very very bullish for example it would be similar to this period here in November where we break out again in price we haven't looked back since we stay trending higher on a day-to-day -day basis until the market takes a pause and the Dow takes a shallow pause when the Dow moves back below 69.1 now that all changed when the Dow recaptured the 69.1 level during that breakout now take a look at the Dow hourly over the last couple of hours the market is picking up momentum because why we are back above 69.1 on the Dow hourly take a look at the Nasdaq hourly which has been above 69.1 going back to about here it's been holding above 69.1 on the hourly which is why we see this acceleration take a look at the Nasdaq from a daily point of view we just moved back above 69.1 during this most recent breakout in price alright so this breakout here corresponding with clearing the previous daily closing highs take a look at the Nasdaq from a weekly standpoint as we've seen with the S&P 500 and the, and the Dow once it broke out and once it moved its weekly RSI above 69.1 we've seen the market have very tiny pullbacks ultimately here we are picking up momentum again don't be surprised if this goes into a hyperbolic move take a look at the Nasdaq weekly excuse me Nasdaq monthly since 2017 somewhere in January or February of last year this market has been trending higher month to month because why there you get it all right now how long can this go on well it depends on how long the market has an appetite for higher prices the last time we stayed above 69.1 in the recent years was here in 2013 to 2015 where the market stayed above 69.1 for almost two years right here so this was almost more than two years which corresponds with this period here where ultimately we continued making new highs even though there were tiny shallow pullbacks now here is the scary part for this market to see a major high we are gonna have to see a major negative divergence period in other words with the market moving higher this is the price let's call that the price or maybe I should do this <laughs> but anyway all right so in, so we are moving higher let's call this the RSI at some point we are gonna see a pullback markets gonna make a new high in price higher highs in price RSI is gonna make a lower high in other words we'll see an improvement in prices RSI will fail to make a new high and it is this negative divergence at some point either on the weekly and on the monthly you want this to be on a big time frame now monthly yes sometimes it can be on the daily but for there to be a major top you'd want to see negative divergence either on the weekly and on the monthly either or so that is when we are gonna see a major top which means if you think about it that this market is potentially going to have to make higher highs even if it pulls back from current levels because we haven't seen any negative divergence on the weekly or on the monthly charts yet so 
for example, if you consider the NASDAQ, the NASDAQ at some point is going to pull back in price. RSI is going to pull back at some point. I don't know when. It's going to make a higher high in price at some point. The RSI is going to make a lower high. It is this future negative divergence that is going to give us a major top. Which means, even with a pullback now, chances are we are still going to make higher highs down the road. Now, this is the weekly chart. Actually, this is the monthly chart for the NASDAQ. Which means, if you take a look at the NASDAQ weekly as an example, we might need to see a pullback at some point in price. And then we're going to make higher highs beyond the current highs. RSI is going to pull back at some point. It's going to make a lame attempt to make new highs. It is this negative divergence where we have an improvement in prices with declining technical strength. This negative divergence is ultimately what is going to give us a major, major top. Now, take a look at this example, which is the SPX monthly and we are from 1995 to let's say early 2001 now take a look at this period here this was not your high all right so we're in a similar stage now remember this took this is one year two year three years where the RSI was above 69.1 so we move above 69.1 here we say above 69.1 until here that's where we get the first major pullback all right in 1998 now notice on an intraday basis this was the high right here that's the intraday high but it only came with this improvement in prices with declining technical strength so that was negative divergence that's what we need to see in the current market also consider that this is the actual monthly closing high not the intraday high but the monthly closing high is right there and again you can see an improvement on a monthly closing basis but this improvement came with declining technical strength and again we see evidence of negative divergence and that was signal that the market in early 2000 was due for a major pullback because of this two negative divergences here. So until we see a major negative divergence either on the weekly and or on the monthly in the current market. So back to the current market, what I'm saying here is don't be surprised if this picks up momentum and this ends up being a hyperbolic move. And we can expect that any future major high is going to come after we see evidence of negative divergence. That has to be visible before we can see a major top. Now, if you want to understand this concept a little bit further, I'm going to include a link. So take a look. There should be a link in the description of the video. Otherwise, for paid Moada.com subscribers, I'll continue monitoring the cryptocurrency space this weekend to see whether we find any new ideas that I can send to you via email. Enjoy your weekend. Eric Moada with Moada.com. As always, good luck, peace, and blessings. E -A -C -S. Mwah. Whoa. Yeah.